What is up, everybody? Coach Nick here for the Strength Pursuit. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the physics physics for performance. Uh, we're going to do a couple parts on this. Um, even if you don't train clients who uh, where performance isn't necessarily their goal, or if performance isn't necessarily your goal, having a basic understanding of these concepts is going to just help you become better overall as a coach and or an athlete, or, uh, you know, as a student of movement, uh, physics underlines all of that. You know, when it comes to performance, you know, we look at things like biomechanics, anatomy, physiology, physics, biology, and many other schools of thought that we have to take in, oh, okay, we'll combine this with this and this and this uh, to help us with performance. And I think it just makes you a better, well-rounded, more well-rounded uh coach and it's good for the brain to learn some new things so if this is new to you welcome uh, i hope you get something out of this uh, and for some of you this may be a refresher so when it comes to movement force is what causes movement without force there's no movement okay so force is any interaction that when unopposed will change motion right yeah, uh, it's a push or pull on an object resulting from the object's interaction with another object. So if you think about if you're sitting down right now, we have to create force in order to stand up. Where does that force come from? Well, we got to our body's got to make some energy in the form of ATP, and then we have to our, our muscle fibers need to contract, actin and myosin need to you know contract and pull on our bones, and we start to create this force and to help us stand up, right? And understanding how force is created and applied is going to help you um, have a better understanding of how that motion is produced, right? Force is the driving factor in every aspect of motion. Uh, it's, without it, we can't move. Uh, so we're going to talk Newton's laws. You might be familiar with them. We can't talk about physics without talking about these laws. Um, you know, a lot, some coaches recently have saying they're outdated, but they've been around for centuries. And I think having a good basic understanding of them, we can usually revert back to these laws when it comes to most motion and now yes as physics advance and you get into like more present day physics and quantum uh physics and things like that you can say yeah those these laws don't exist for what we we're trying to do these laws are really important so newton's first law is the law of inertia right now inertia is the tendency to resist changes in motion okay so uh, an object at rest will remain at rest or if it's in motion it's going to remain in motion at a constant velocity unless acted on by a net external force right this net external force is the cause for the change in velocity right so if you know you drop a bouncy ball off a building we have gravity is the force acting on that now if you were to drop it off a spaceship where there's no gravity that ball would remain in motion unless acted on you know by an outside force right so say like a another bouncy ball comes by and hits it it's going to change its direction right so you know inertia we things don't like to move they like to stay where they're at uh, you know that's why it's hard you know to start a new lifestyle or things people don't like to move we have to move inertia we, it resists change in motion um, so just things like to stay at rest things like to stay in motion and then force will act upon it to change that rest and or motion Second law is the law of force. This is one most strength coaches are familiar with. Uh, the acceleration of an object will depend on the mass of the object and the amount of force applied. Right? So force equals mass times acceleration. So most, time, most of the time mass remains constant. It doesn't change unless we're using accommodating resistance. But if you're walking down the street, your mass doesn't change. So with this kind of there's a direct relationship between force and acceleration when mass is constant and the only time mass really changes again is using accommodating resistance in the gym right so the acceleration of an object is proportional to the total force applied to it right so knowing that um, so mass is the amount of substance an object possesses and knowing this right it, it's also a measurement of an object's resistance to acceleration. Um, but again, it's rare that the mass of, the, of a moved object, that the mass changes. So understanding this 
allows us to put a greater emphasis on the acceleration aspect of um, of this equation, right? We don't have to worry about mass. You know, if, if you have someone who's trying to run faster and they're a little bigger, well, you could maybe like, hey, we need to drop a little, a little bit of weight in order for us to move better, right? Um, so uh, acceleration, right? Acceleration is the rate at which an object changes in its velocity. And we'll talk about velocity here in, in a minute, but uh, it, this is it. Acceleration is just the rate at which an object changes its velocity. A lot of coaches like to use the term deceleration as a decrease in acceleration, but all that is, is still acceleration. I used to fight this for years and people are like, you're just nitpicking because words and definitions matter, right? But um, just know that acceleration is the rate at which an object changes velocity. It doesn't matter if it's speeding up or slowing down. It's just its change in velocity. The higher our acceleration is, that means the greater our force output. Remember, force and acceleration have this direct relationship. So we'll talk about squatting, right? If you squat and accelerate the bar in your body at high rates, greater amount of force is produced, right? Again, unless you're using accommodating resistance, the mass is going to remain identical throughout the movement. So therefore, force production is dictated by the acceleration of your body into the bar. That's how fast is the bar move? How fast can you accelerate the bar? The faster you can accelerate, the more force you can produce. So let's look at the acceleration equation, right? Acceleration is the change in velocity over time. But we got to dig a little deeper into change in velocity. So this triangle is just a delta. It just, it just means change uh, when you're writing out formulas. So you don't have to write change uh, so many times when you're, you're writing them out uh, in college lab, right? <laughs> so what is velocity? Velocity is the rate at which an object changes its position over an amount of time. It's change in displacement, and we'll talk about that here in a second. It's change in displacement over change in time. Velocity is what's known as a vector quantity, meaning it has both magnitude and direction. So how much in, in, in what direction, right? So a velocity is essentially uh, an, uh, the object's speed and direction of motion. So Speed just tells us how fast. It just tells us, um, yeah, how fast something is going. So if we're going 25 miles per hour, that tells us its speed. If we say 25 miles per hour north, now we know its velocity. All right, and then displacement is um, the overall change in position. Okay, distance on the other hand tells us how much ground has been covered. Right, so displacement is how far between where you started and where you finished. I know I'm using my hands and you guys can't see it. How far where you started and where you finished. Now I could take me all this other length of distance to get there, but the displacement is from here to here, right? So if you start for a 400 meter dash and you run that complete circle, there's been no displacement because you started and ended in the same spot, right? But 100 to 200 meters, there's been displacement. 100 to 300, there's been displacement. 200 to 400 meters, there's been displacement. So then we can start to calculate velocity for that change in position. Um, so again, speed and velocity are not the same thing. Speed is scalar, um, scalar meaning it only describes the magnitude. Um, it has no direction. It tells us how fast something's going. Okay. So now if we go back to the equation, right? So acceleration was change in velocity over change in time. So that's what the, this change in X over change in T is. It's the velocity equation, right? So now if we want to increase an athlete's velocity, you either have to increase the time over which force is applied or the amount of force produced in that given time. So I'll say that again. If you want to increase an athlete's velocity, you either increase the time over which force is applied or the amount of force produced in a given time. When it comes to sports and athletics, we want to increase the amount of force produced in the least amount of time. Okay? So, I know that was a lot in a little. Uh, you can go back and watch it, but let's um, just, I hope you're staying up with me. So, you can see like how we went from this really simple equation of force equals mass times acceleration is to now, you know, this little bit more complex equation. And it's not always as simple as, well, we'll just increase the acceleration. Well, what does that mean? 
when it comes to training. Newton's third law, action and reaction, right? Whenever one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts an equal and opposite force on the first. If object A exerts a force on object B, object B also exerts an equal amount of opposite force into object A. Um, right, so I come in here, and I come here, there's going to be an equal amount of force until it evens out, right? Until the motion starts. But if I keep going like this, this is going to keep pushing back at it, right? So there's always going to be equal and opposite until, remember, force causes motion, until the motion stops. So if I'm running at a defender, who's going to be able to create more force, right? He's got to try and stop me, which leads us into uh, momentum, right? Momentum is simply mass in motion. It's mass times velocity, right? How fast is that thing going in that direction, right? All objects have mass. And if an object is moving, it has momentum. The amount of momentum is going to depend on how much mass and how fast it's moving. Second, third laws, right? Or second law, right? Now, the second law is the, the law of force, right? Um, sorry. Is a law of force. So the more momentum, momentum something something has, the harder it is to stop. And in order to stop it, we need to apply a amount of force against its motion that's higher than that. Okay. So um, this leads us into impulse. Impulse is the amount of force or the amount of accumulated force throughout a movement. Okay. Stay with me. I'm going to try and impulses where some people can kind of get lost. So force impulse is impulse is force multiplied times time. So what this is known as a change in momentum. So with force and time, we can use impulse can be calculated in many ways. It can be a, it's a single instant in time or the total force throughout in a, a movement. Right, so let's talk about like a vertical jump. We can use the impulse as the, the total force produced during the time it takes to complete the jump. Or we can calculate impulse as in different portions of that jump. Okay, So the amount of force throughout the movement. It can be the entire movement or it can be parts of those movements. Now a very small portion or we can call it the, an instantaneous impulse, such as like the initiation of the jump, right? So that amount, how much force is applied in that initiation of a vertical jump? This is your impulse. We can call it instantaneous impulse because we're just going to measure that, right? This could be important for those of for strength coaches who you know we want to we want to increase the rate at which force is produced. Reduced, right, so we got to increase. We want that impulse to be high, um, and it's up to the coach which part they measure. So we can either measure impulse as the, the amount of a for force throughout the entire movement, or different parts of the movement. Um, while movement is dependent on force being applied, what is even more important is the time in which force is applied. Okay, so while movement is dependent. On force being applied, what's even more important is the amount of time in which that force is applied. That is impulse. Okay, so if I back squat, we compare like a back squat to a vertical jump, and let's say, so typically your impulse is going to be higher in a vertical jump, but it's going to be greater in a back squat. Right, because that we, we need to produce force quickly in order to jump high. If you go down slow for a jump, you're not going to jump high. You have to produce a tremendous amount of force quickly. Back squatting, though, we produce force over a little bit length, longer length of time. Right, so impulse equals force multiplied by time. Right, so when it comes to like field sports, the athlete who can move fast and change velocities quickly will have an advantage over the rest of, of the their competition. So, I don't know, I like, this is, uh, impulse is also known as change in momentum, right? How can we change the momentum of an object? How can we change, uh, you know, how fast we can move mass? We want to move mass fast, right? So, momentum. 
Um, an impulse is essentially what is responsible for those changes in velo velocity. You know, how can we produce as much force in the least amount of time? This is the underlying principle in most training programs for performance, right? I would rather squat 500 pounds quicker, quickly than slowly, right? It's just, let's get this bar off my back. So uh, I know that's real quick, uh, you know, and, and we tried, I tried to get in as much as, as I could, as quickly as I can, but these are really simple concepts. Please go back through and watch it again. I know it can be a lot to take on, uh, but, you know, we need to consider these concepts and the desired outcomes of our training programs utilizing these concepts, right? What, what is the desired out, outcome of the program you're running? And then we can use these concepts to program accordingly, right? So when it comes to sports, by understanding the, the time available in a sport, we are able to put together more of a specific training in regards to force application, right? So I don't know, like, let's just say football, right? We have, how much time do we have to produce force? Not a lot. We, we got to get move. We got to move quick, right? Most sports got to move quick. So can we produce force at a high rate quickly, right? Like if I can get from point A to point B quicker than the other athlete, I win, right? Speed kills, velocity kills, right? Whatever, whatever. So I hope that was beneficial. Uh, in the upcoming parts, I want to talk about a, a different way to look at movement as like a, a relationship of collisions. And then I want to talk about power and then we'll get into like the force velocity curve and how we can apply that to train. So if you have any questions, ask them. Until next time, thank you.